you know, we've seen earlier with the deplatforming, the move towards um, blockchain, uh, social media, right, in terms of the video platforms and, you know, and, you know, content creator platforms being on blockchain and payment systems being built in. But I think it is the networking and the connection of all of a person's data into one node where you can create the interoperability of how past actions reflect future actions, how past actions impacted one another, sort of the complexity theory, it all starts to come together when you have this digital identity, which is the digital twin. And, you know, there, I didn't actually pull out an image of this, but with when Musk was talking about like authenticating accounts, we know that that's where things are headed, right? Like, it's going to be when you when you go onto the internet, you're supposed to, you know, authenticate yourself. And there will be some crisis that, that you know, forces that issue, right? They will create a crisis that will now, and it, it you know, it, it will be part of the buildup. When I was looking at the Global Education Futures Forum, uh, and this was in 2015, I think, they, within their map, their timeline of uh, education to 2035, at some point on there, it was a unique identifier to access the internet. Right. So this is, I mean, and, and I'm sure that that was cooked up well, well before 2015, but it, it was on the map. And so, you know, and this is speaks to Bitcoin, but I think really any of the decentralized ledger systems. And when we were talking the other day about the MTA conference and um, Scott Stornetta talking about, you know, his involvement in another early decentralized encrypted ledger system that that they're talking about these things as if they were organisms, right? And that's what Norbert Wiener was saying, right? If you can create the right feedback loops and the right systems and the reinforcement protocols, you can make a digital system, a mechanical system appear as though it were a living system. And so, you know, already, and I know Bitcoiners are a whole nother league, you know, they have their whole other culture that they're a part of. And I'm sure that that's by design to, to, they're probably a test bed for what does this culture look like, right? How do we manage this culture? Um, but they're talking about it sort of as a mycelium. Uh, and this, this is Brandon Quittem. This is, you know, a, a but he's not the only one of talking about Bitcoin as not only an architecture or a social phenomenon, but he talks about it as a catalyst for human evolution. And this corresponds with what we've been discussing with Oliver Reiser and the World Sensorium and sort of radio eugenics and this boost, um, which aligns all the way back to the 60s and 70s, the human potential movement, right, that we are going to have some uplifted consciousness that that lifts us up from being mere material human beings into a an alternative electrical energetic state i mean we already are but a, a different kind something that's perhaps more ephemeral i guess or more connected and so i think my title of talking about it as a super organism is that twitter in and of itself once everyone is authenticated on accessing the internet will be melding us as elements of the superorganism. And maybe we get to be different kinds of fungi, you know, uh, the um, the bodies, the, the, the fungal bodies that come out, but it, it really is the, the network itself that underlies all of it that's never going away. That's, you know, in the, in, I was talking with what's left and Eduardo had a question about ghosts, right? Like our digital ghosts and where are we floating around? And I'm like, I don't know, Eduardo, maybe we are, maybe, maybe not ghosts, maybe we're just part of the fungal network, you know, the neural fungal network down there. 